today I'm going to give you five mistakes that I see people make before they file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case. Hi, I'm Scott Allen, a consumer bankruptcy attorney in Alabama. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for checking it out. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit that notifications button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Today is part two of a video series where I'm talking about mistakes or things that you probably shouldn't do before you file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case. The last video that we did was four mistakes that people make or four things you shouldn't do before you file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case. And today I'm going to give you five more things. So number one, it would be a mistake to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case if your income exceeds your expenses. And I'm not talking about a few dollars here and there, but if I filed a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case for someone and their income greatly exceeded their expenses, I would probably get some questions from the bankruptcy administrator or the Chapter 7 trustee saying, what are you doing here? Shouldn't your client maybe be in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy case? Is this not bad fate? Shouldn't they be in a different chapter if they can afford to pay some of their debt back? So you want to kind of make sure that you examine your budget, make sure you look at your income and expenses to make sure that you don't have a lot of income. So you want to make sure your budget looks okay and you're filing the right chapter. And so this is one of the things that you'd be talking to your lawyer about before you file a bankruptcy case. Number two, don't file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case if you think you've got a large portion of some medical expenses coming up that you may not be able to pay for that's just unavoidable. Make sure you do some bankruptcy planning, and there are always reasons why we could come up with that you need to file now. But if for some reason you can wait to file a case, it may put you in a better position if you wait till after you have those medical procedures done. If for some reason you're going to have large bills associated with those procedures. So timing is important when you're looking at filing a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case to make sure you maximize the benefit of your fresh start. Number three, if you don't have health insurance and you can wait to file a bankruptcy case until you get health insurance, that's probably the best way to go. And let me give you an example. It was This happened several years ago where I had a client come in and it was in the fall of several years ago and he was not working and wanted to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case to get rid of some unsecured debts that was piling up and he was tired of the collection phone calls. Well, he was actively looking for work and we were anticipating him getting work within the next several weeks or maybe even a month. My thoughts were, is why don't we delay the filing of his bankruptcy case until he gets a job and can get some health insurance? Because at the time he came in, initially came in, he had no health insurance. And so we delayed the filing of the case because there was no reason at that point to go ahead and file. He came back to see me after the first of the year, it had been three months down the road, and he came back and said, Scott, I'm so glad I listened to you because I had a major heart attack. I didn't have health insurance at the time, but now I'm working and now I have health insurance and I'm ready to move forward and file a case. If we would have filed back in the fall and he would have had his heart attack two months later, it wouldn't be a debt that we could include in his bankruptcy case. And he would have potentially this huge medical bill that would saddle him down and impede his ability to get his fresh start. So these are things that you want to think about in timing when you're looking at filing a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case, again, so you can maximize the benefit of your fresh start. Okay, mistake number four is charging up a bunch of credit card debt on the eve of filing your bankruptcy case. So the most common allegation of false pretense is that you incurred your debt with the intent to never pay it back. That may be difficult to prove, but in cases where you charged on a credit card, an aggregate value, meaning a bunch of charges that in a 90-day window on a single credit card that was for luxury goods or for services that exceeded more than $725, it's presumed that you did that under false pretense that you'd had no plans to pay it back. Now, a creditor would have to come and file an adversary proceeding in court, basically sue you to have that debt determined non-dischargeable or that it would basically survive bankruptcy that you still owe it. It's not wiped away. Those are one of the things you need to look out for. You know, monitor your credit card or take a look at it. You know, what charges have you made? Were they for luxury goods or for services? Did you go down to the casino and do a bunch of gambling and charging up your credit card or go to the beach on a credit card or buy a whole bunch of Christmas gifts for things of that nature on the eve of filing bankruptcy case? 
those could be problems. Make sure you're talking to your lawyer about some of those issues and maybe you need to delay filing a bankruptcy case so you don't get into those type of situations where you're looking at the possibility of being sued by one of your creditors or that credit card company to have that debt survive or be determined non-dischargeable. So the fifth thing that we're going to talk about as far as mistakes before you file Chapter 7 bankruptcy or things that you want to avoid is cash advances. It is presumed that cash advances aggregating a total of more than $1,000 within 70 days of filing your Chapter 7 bankruptcy case, it's just presumed that those debts are non-dischargeable. Again, you may face yourself in a situation where you're being sued by one of your creditors that they come into court and they ask that that debt be determined non-dischargeable. And if a creditor doesn't challenge these things, those debts will end up being wiped away through the bankruptcy discharge. But again, be mindful of these cash advances, these credit card transactions that are taking place before you file a bankruptcy case and make sure you're disclosing these things with your lawyers so y'all can talk about what your options are. Those are some of the five mistakes that I see people make, pitfalls or don'ts that you should be mindful for before considering filing a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case. I hope this information was helpful. If you're in Alabama and you need some bankruptcy-related assistance or need me to take a look at some issues with you, feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to help you with it. I hope you have a great day and stay tuned for the next video. We've got some additional things I'm going to go over and add to these mistakes. So until next time.